Assalamu alaikum. Again, I am here. Let us let us discuss more about Joseph Andrews. I hope that I can I can do it as as soon as possible. That I can as possibly I can complete it, and then we'll we'll go with the with the further uh, for for the novel. Uh, oh wow! Let's start with the the beautiful uh, say the flow chart. The flow chart basically shows the the major and the minor character. Find out the in the center. You will find out Joseph Andrew. He is the charitable, respectful footman. He has uh, started job at uh, apprentice at the age of ten at Mrs. Uh, Lady Booby's uh, house, right? And then you will find out the Miss uh, Mr. Parson Adam. He learned but vain clergyman. So he's a learned person, but he's a he's a vain clergyman. He's not really. Uh, possesses the real characteristic of a real person, so he be, he do believe that he would be a mentor of Joseph Andrews, right? And they have we have some other minor characters. So uh, um, uh, there are the other characters, the lady, the important characters, the lady movie, and uh, she's again the I don't know immoral widow. She is the pediatric. Uh, she is not a moral person. She is not a poor moral woman. She used to basically uh, say, um, soon after he uh, he wants Joseph Andrews as uh, his companion, uh, and uh, he basically uh, and he uh, tries a lot. She basically tries a lot to seduce. Uh, to the venue, and he uh, he has she has used too many uh, and many tactics to seduce Mr. Joseph and to have illicit uh, relationship with him because he, as I have told you before, that Joseph Andrews is a very beautiful person. So, uh, and then we have a Fanny Goodwill, a beautiful, loyal dairy maid. She is a beloved. She is a love uh, of Mr. Andrew, and he. He really wants to uh, have her in any way, and she basically also Fanny Goodwill also uh, the former employer of Miss uh, Mrs. Lady Bobby, and there is uh, Mr. Wilson. At the end, you will find out who is Mr. Wilson. But uh, just come to know that Mr. Wilson is the unknown father of Joseph Andrew. So Joseph Andrew believed to be the with the whole novel. You will believe that he would be the he. Would the uh, the brother of uh, Pamela and Mr. And Mrs. Josephs is uh, their real parents, but somehow in the end you will uh, we will come to know that Mr. Wilson's uh, son who has kidnapped before uh, a year absolutely many years before would be Mr. Joseph Andrew. So we uh, Joseph Andrew did not know about that. His father is a Mr. Joseph, uh, Mr. Wilson. He's a very g generous, hospitable, relax, uh, country square person, uh, relax. Uh, so he's a kind host, and uh, and that's uh, um, and that's all with the characters. They are the major character. There's one more character which I do believe in that that is the very major character, the peddler, who used to who used to. Uh, who really unfold the real story with among the uh, between the sorry? Who really uh, unfold the story of Joseph Andrews and Fanny Goodwill, right? Or you'll say he, uh, Mr. Pedler has uh, uh, given a very uh, a very disturbing kind of uh, 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 say. Uh, what I will say that uh, <laughs> Mr. Pedler has basically uh, is the the tool who uh, who we come came to know that he has given the the description or the real uh, secret of between uh, uh, behind them. Oh, the the picture of the plot. So you can see that as we have talked about is the five basic structure the five elements of the plot. There's the introduction, which is we also uh, rising actions, climax, and falling actions and resolutions. 
So let's see that uh, it has been taken in that way. So the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 you got the climax and 12, 13, 14, 14 is the falling actions and 15. So I'll give you the next step with the, with the next slide you will come to know how it has been described. So I'll go one by one with that. So you will just go through with this, uh, see this, there are 10 things and then one climax and then your falling actions, rising actions and the, the denouement is there, the resolution is there. Introduction. The one thing is that Joseph becomes apprentice to, uh, to Sir Thomas Booby at age eight, 10. The rising actions are Joseph becomes footman to Lady Booby at age 17. Joseph is fired for not accepting Lady Booby's advances. His advances to seduce him and want uh, want him uh, want uh, built a relation illegitimate relationship with Mr. Joseph Andrews. Joseph is rescued after being robbed by a highwayman. While recovering at an inn, Joseph runs into a Parson Adams. Parson Adams and Joseph set off for their hometown. Parson Adams saved Joseph's fiance from a rapist. Uh, Fanny and Joseph reunite as set off with Parson Adams. The trio take shelter with Mr. Wilson and learn his story and even Square offers the trio false hospitality then what happened he, uh, with the Square he again uh, this person also uh, also uh, 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 attacked Fanny to have a to have a rape basically and the climax is there Fanny is saved again from the rapist uh, the evil square. So again, the, this climax is not uh, in such a way. Um, uh, okay, uh, the plot is there. The plot is to. It is the journey of Mr. Joseph Henry to uh, to just meet Mr. Miss, Miss Fanny. But the climax, Fanny is saved again, again from the rapist, the evil. It, it. I cannot make it that it would be a climax. But it has been written. Most of the people used to believe that it is not a real climax of the. Uh, novel, but again, uh, it is of climax. But I do believe that, as Mr. Wilson, uh, 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 as we came to know that Mr. Wilson's story, so that would be the climax. I I do believe in that, but uh, I don't know. It has been written that it is the interpretation of the sum of the person. It is again your interpretation. How do you believe in that? The following actions are: Fanny and Joseph are arrested after reuniting home. A peddler re reveals that Fanny is a Pamela, a Pamela's Andrew's sister. Uh, Mrs. Andrew reveals that Joseph's in her is her uh, is her adopted uh, child. So there's a connection again between 14, number 14, and number 9. So you will find out the the connections there. So <coughs> sorry. There is again the plot summary. You'll find out the resolution, the rising action climax. Okay, symbolism, yes. The symbolism, which is again an important uh, part of the novel. And with this, we'll come to know the novels have the astralist text, the text which is which belongs, the religious text basically, which belong to the, uh, the, the, the Bible and the uh, Right. Let me take my notes. Okay. We have uh, the actualist text. Basically, these uh, the text is from uh, the from the uh, from the Bible, and it has to represent Mr. Parson Adam because uh, he uh, is a uh, and he actually his learning as well as his vanity about his learning. He's not a real uh, learned person. But he shows his basic, basically he overshows his uh, his uh, his learning. Though he doesn't know a lot, know a lot. The text also represents his over reliance on book knowledge. Bookish knowledge is there. When the parson accidentally throw the text in the fire, he signal his willingness to give a back seat to book learning in a favor of paying more attention to what is in front of him. However, his resolution is uh, short-lived. It's not. Is a not uh, he never talked about a lot on real uh, learnings, and as he was too much uh, inspired of the learning of Mr. Joseph also in the first two three chapters. Okay, Joseph's birthmark. It is again uh, Joseph's strawberry birthmark is a symbol of his true origin and identifies him as the son of Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, stolen from the gypsies. 
and uh, raised by uh, Mr. M Mrs. Andrews. Um, a strawberry is also, it also symbolizes, as we have already talked about, it is also summarized with a fresh, um, a sweet, beautiful um, fruit, which is associated, again, the, f uh, the fitting symbol for Joseph, because as he was too much beautiful and fresh, because he's a young person, and um, Joseph is a beautiful man who is a, who is a magnet uh, for female attention and he is uh, ripe for the picking like a summer strawberry so he's ready be a girl you um, as a woman used to believe that is the ripe to one and then we, they want to have it they want to have him in any in any way person adam's crab stick uh, person adam uh, is a fighter by nature both in words and in deed he's a uh, never one of back down from fight the crab stick cane made of wood from a crab apple basically apple tree the crab is the, the stick basically which he used to carry all the time symbolizes his the vulnerability as a teacher since he is a middle-aged and also his skill is the physical fighting and his strength is the white in vitality uh, the crab stick is a weapon of choice when he has to defend the people who are in his uh, are in his charge so he basically uh, used to, uh, just to, um, you'll say that is again uh, a representation of, uh, symbolizes the teacher, as the teacher used to have this stick all the time, to teach every time in that way. Okay, uh, the, the symbolism are, is also with the names of Mr. Uh, Joseph Andrews and Parson, as we have talked about before, Henry Feelings uses people's names to create broad, basically, comedy, and it is a satire, so he has been taken Joseph Andrew from the remnants of the, uh, the handsome and kind Joseph of the Old Testament basically and the forefather of the Jacobs uh, and then thrown into the pit of the, his jealousy brothers sold into slavery Joseph's identity is hidden in the Bible story so we can also symbolize or we relate in our, our religious theory and Mr. Hart, Adam has a uh, biblical character. Adam is the father of the mankind. As the parson, the parson is the father of his uh, uh, parishioners. The parson attempts to mimic Abraham in his obedience of God, and uh, and is much, uh, you'll say, enamored of the story of Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son. Isaac. So you will find out that as Abraham used to portray, that is the satirical way that Abraham is used to portray his vanity uh, of learning to to the other people. Okay. What else? Okay. The first one is she resolves to give a loose to her in amorous inclination and to and to pay off the debt of pleasure which she found she owed herself. It is a narrator, book one, chapter six. So it is a feeling. The quote refers to Mrs. Slipslop. She is an older and a very ugly woman, the gentlewoman in waiting of Lady Bovey. Like her mistress, she become enamored of Joseph. Although single, the narrator indicates that she is not a virgin. So the narrator, the feeling used to believe that he, he's not, she's not a virgin, but she also wants him uh, as a illegitimate uh, relation in a re illegitimate relationship, and she really to have him. Therefore, she intends to satisfy her passion for pursuing Joseph. So, okay, Mr. Adam hath often told me that chastity is a great a virtue in a man as in a woman so again joseph Andrews book one chapter 10 beautiful line mr adam hath often told me that chastity is a great a virtue in a man as in a woman so it is again equality is there they are equally important for man and woman and it has been uh, given in that way because basically in preface he used to be feeling used to believe that why, why Richardson has uh, exploited uh, men in that way that women just want uh, the uh, want to fulfill their needs in that way it is not like that or that uh, women also uh, men also believe in that that they don't uh, they don't uh, they want to secure their chastity okay forgive them as as it is to forgive them 
as. In short, it is to forgive them as a Christian. Mr. Baron Barris uh, is a parson, and uh, is a, min a minister who become. Mr. Baron Barris is a minister, basically. He who becomes to see Joseph Andrews after he has been told by the doctor that he is on his deathbed. Uh, uh, Baron Bus insists that Joseph forgive his attackers, and uh, Joseph explained that he would vent them taken and that he saw them in who he would uh, he would uh, want to attack and kill them and uh, he says that uh, Mr. Barabbas uh, uh, believes that uh, it is lawful but he still needs to forgive the thieves that you don't need to just to forgive the thieves whatever they have done to you is just to forgive when Joseph asked him what it would mean to forgive them Barabbas clearly clues that and can only repeat the clashes. So again, why, why there is, if there is some, uh, some goodness in you, and you do believe that we used to believe, can I maaf kar dena chahiye? Koi kuch bhi kahe hume maaf kar dena chahiye. Magar in uh, when I, uh, this is a, again interpretation. It, this is my interpretation. In Quran, we used to believe in that koi ek mare, usko ek tum bhi maro. Koi patthar se mare, to patthar ka jawab patthar hai. हर चीज का जवाब मौजूद है बट अगर माफ कर दो तो बेहतर है तो दिस इज बेसिकली दॉर्ट ऑफ मीनिंग इज देयर वट एवर ही है बट ही हैज सम प्रूफ विद दैट एंड दैट ही इज फेल ही बेसिकली फेल्स टू गिव हिम ओके गुड टर्क इज मोर एक्सेप्टेबल टू द क्रिएटर देन अ विकेट क्रिस्चियन दो हिज फेथ वॉज एज अ परफेक्टली आउट ऑर्थोडेक्स एट सैंड पोल It is book one. Parson Adam used to uh, say that uh, book one, chapter seventeen, when Mr. Barnabas and Pastor Adam be begin speaking about the theology and uh, Adam uh, certain types of methodology teaching that declares only way of Parson can be justified ultimately saved by God is through faith. The more precise doctrine, which uh, they are talking about, more, uh, more, uh, more. religious way so it is not that important but i have just uh, uh, put it in a way they are the two people are talking about more christian or so those people basically as novel has pretended to depict the 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 morality the teaches us the morality so here they are trying to teach us morality by the speaking or by the two, two different speakers some other quotes which are not belongs to the book one because we have to focus on the book one so there are some other quotes which i do like uh, which shows the some of the characters high people signifies no other than people of fashion very good to write high people signify no other than people of fashion and low people those of no fashion so <laughs> this is again very beautiful line which uh, which signifies that uh, uh, or to give the differences between uh, the high people and the low Which he provides a simplified explanation of the British class system. Basically, in his view, the two types of people are high people, and the, they are the two types of people: high people and the low people, or people of fashions and out of fashions. There are, are, are the contention between these groups, and uh, um, moreover, those peoples of the um, of the highest and the lowest of the high find that they change their party according to the place and time. section on the class system is humor humorous but also verbally ironic and can be read as critically commentary of these manufactured differences between people so you will uh, you will find throughout the novel you will find how high people used to believe they see things how low people used to believe and see things um, if goodness one of the beauty of uh, the king the triple gold which is not from their book 3 Uh, if goodness of man man's heart did not incline him to relieve the distress of his fellow creatures me think the desire of honor should move him to it um, It is, this this statement is made by, made by Mr. Joseph Andrews when he for the first time 
uh, in this in the novel takes centers of stage and present his own view of charity he is able to do so because parson adam is sleeping joseph says because as parson has uh, adam uh, uh, symbolizes the the, the the overpower kind of person he used to overpower his knowledge on joseph adams but his this uh, line these lines this uh, statement has been given by joseph adams for first time on charity what he believes the charity is joseph says that uh, he doesn't understand why he has seen so few instances instances of charity among the people he has observed his reason indicate that even if people do not want to help other because they feel genuine compassion uh, then they would help others just to look well in the eyes of others so it is so hypocrisy it's so vanity that the people used to believe that uh, just to incline towards someone without thinking that he has some honor or not these are two other uh, uh, quotes from lady gopi and uh, mr fielding book 4 chapter 6